Hey, welcome to Internet Roundup. I'm the Toothless Wonder. That's Bowl Cut. And <laughs> we're Josh and Chuck. Man, Toothless Wonder and Bowl Cut? Yeah. See that? I got the Bieber going on. My hair is long these days. It is. It won't go away. Well. Keep pulling it out. They make a utensil that takes care of that. A fork? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Rake it over. Stab your head with a fork. Uh, this, is, of <laughs> this is Internet Roundup. And um, what we do is we take two things off the internet, one at a time, and light them on fire, and they don't exist anymore. That's right. And we're going to start with something I thought was really interesting. And the name of the article is, Who Are You Wearing mm -hmm. Gets Literal with DNA-Based Fashion. Yeah. So here's the idea. There's this designer named Tina uh, Gorjonk, maybe? Goryonk. Goryonk. Goryonch. And uh, what she is doing, there, there was this wonderful designer named Alexander McQueen, who, um, and I'm not into fashion. You're not. I mean, unless cargo shorts and flip-flops are fashion. <laughs> it's norm core, right? <laughs> I guess. It's old man core. <laughs> uh, but I did go to the Alexander McQueen uh, show at... I think it was the MoMA Met. or the Met. the Met. And did you go to that? Yeah. And I was blown away. Mm -hmm. Like I'd never seen anything that cool. Yeah. Like that had anything to do with clothing in my life. That was definitely one of the top three curated exhibits I've ever seen. Me too. Yeah. And not only were the clothes and everything really neat, but the way they did it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. It was just blew me away. And so I got an interest in Alexander McQueen after that. And so did Tina. Because what she has done is gotten some of his DNA and plans to grow skin from his DNA and make clothing from it. Yeah. That's and it's not where you expected this to go, probably. No. But she's going to make lab-grown skin to turn into leather for bags, jackets, that kind of thing. Alexander McQueen skin. Right. Um, which is apparently legal. It is because he left his DNA mm -hmm. uh, in the form of hair. Oh, he left it everywhere. <laughs> in the form of hair sewn into the labels of his Jack the Ripper stalks his victims line yeah. from, I think, 1992. Great line. And um, so, Ms. Uh, what are we going with here? I'm going to go with Gore Yonk. But it's clearly a Balkan name, and the C is usually a ch or a Z sound, right? All right, let's go with Gore Yonk. What was Robert Radizak's name? I don't remember. Okay. So, <laughs> Goryange. Yeah. That sounds French. And it was William <laughs> Radicek. Was it? Yeah. Boy, we did screw that up like multiple times. We sure did. Um, so, the uh, fashion designers um, taken these these hairs mm -hmm. from this line and is using them to, to harvest DNA to produce lab-grown skin. That's the whole point. Yep. And she's saying... This is awesome. Yes, of course, this is going to generate interest. I don't plan on making enough stuff for this to be widely available. Yeah. She's trying to draw attention to and, I guess, get funding for this process of doing lab-grown skin yeah. so that she can supplant the process of um, slaughter, the slaughter of animals, for leather. Yeah, it eventually comes around to a place after being horrified for a page where you go, oh, she's not selling it. She's not looking to profit from it. What she's trying to do is ultimately save animals. Right. So eventually I was like, oh, okay, well, I get it. And it's a good way to get attention. It is, but I, I think she's actually going to, there's going to be a proof of concept using oh, yeah. Alexander McQueen's skin. And she's going to uh, recreate the tattoos that he had in the same places on a leather jacket. <laughs> yeah. Pretty awesome. Um, put moles on. It's going to be amazing. And one of the other cool things is she's not tanning the leather. Oh, yes, but it might be tanned. So it, it can be sunburned. Yeah. I actually saw a picture of a bag. I don't know if she's made it already or if it was like an artist's rendering. No, I think she made a purse with okay. a tattoo on it. And did you see like this? It had a tan line yeah. from where the handle fell. It was amazing. Yeah, very creepy. Yeah. So I'm very curious to know how much this the actual Alexander McQueen stuff's going to go for. Yeah, and that also makes me wonder if, if you want the color to stay the same, if you have to then... Put sunscreen on your skin vest. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be a serial killer anymore. You can just be like, yeah. uh, here's some DNA, like one skin <laughs> vest, please. 
or Ed Gein. Man, I've been reading about him lately. He was Oh yeah. Nuts. You've been going down the re- the serial killer rabbit hole? Yeah. I've done that before late at night. Oh, sure. Gets a little creepy. Yeah. What else are you going to do at like 10 in the morning? Yeah. And sun's out. <laughs> All right. Uh next up we have uh young girl laid to rest again 145 years after her first burial. Yeah. And this sounds a little creepy, but it's actually a very sweet story. Very touching. San Francisco. San Francisco, Dateline, the other day. Was it? Yeah, it wasn't very long ago. Um, there was a, a, I guess a couple, one of whom was named Erica Carner. She and her family were redoing their San Francisco home. Yes. And they were digging up the basement, or some workmen were, and some workmen came across a little tiny coffin. Yeah. In Obviously old coffin, but a really ornate coffin. Yeah, it was glass in some parts, right? So you yeah, see metal into and it. glass. And it apparently was perfectly airtight mm-hmm. because inside was a little girl who'd been buried about 150 years before yeah. who was perfectly preserved. Her hair was still preserved. She was holding a rose that was still preserved. Amazing. And um, they were a little taken aback by this. Yeah, so it was on the site of uh, the former... Oddfellows Cemetery. Which I would want to be buried in a place called Oddfellows. I love the Oddfellows thing. Yeah. And uh, 30,000 people were originally buried there and then uh, moved when they needed uh, housing for tech bros later right. on. Yeah. Actually, that was probably long before that. They needed housing for the residents of San Francisco. Yeah, starting around 1920, I think, is when they moved them. There were no tech bros then. Not yet. No. Uh, unless it was the tech of 1920s. They were trolley bros. (laughs) Trolley bros. Uh, So they moved all these bodies except for this one, and who knows what else might turn up in the future. Yeah, but they they missed one. Yeah, they missed at least one. And this lady named uh, Alyssa Davey is the founder of a a group called Garden of Innocence. It's a charity Mm -hmm. who for uh, 20 years or so, she's been burying bodies of unidentified kids in California. So- Talk about a labor of love yeah. that doesn't probably get much attention or fanfare. Mm-hmm. It's like truly a, a wonderful thing that she's doing. Yep. And she took this girl in to bury her, raise some money, and more than 100 people showed up at her memorial service. Yeah, people crying, people throwing roses on her casket, and Man. she was she was buried again. Um, Pretty neat. Yeah, 140 years after she was originally buried. They don't know the girl's name. Right. What are they uh, calling her? Miranda Eve. Yep, Miranda Eve. So on the on her headstone, which was also donated, mm-hmm. um, it says Miranda Eve, and then they left the other side blank in case they ever do identify her, because apparently the medical yeah. examiner took some DNA samples to keep on file. But they they yeah. don't know who she is. Pretty I'm not. Amazing. I I didn't get from this um, SFGate article how they knew um, she had been buried 145 years before. If they didn't know her name or anything like that. Uh, they probably, you know. Rough estimate? That's That'd be my guess. Yeah. It was a neat coffin. Did you see pictures of it? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. I, I was anti-coffin for myself, but I think now. You want one with glass? Sure. Airtight one with glass? Yeah. You're going to be holding a rose? Dig me up in 150 years. <laughs> <laughs> call me Miranda Eve. All right. I'm going to call you Miranda Eve in the meantime. Great. Uh, so that's it for Internet Roundup. I'm Miranda Eve. And I'm Bowl Cut. And uh, we'll see you next time in the studio. <laughs> <laughs>